Ever heard of a cult that believed aliens were hiding in their bodies, controlling their every move? Yeah, that happened. And get this, there's many other historical accounts just like it. In this video, we will get into the bizarre stories that'll make your jaw drop. So stick around if you can handle the shock. Number 5. Nexium. Keith Rainier thought he could start a self-help group, but ended up running a strange sex cult. Back in 1998, he kicked off this thing called NXIVM, which he pronounced as Nexium. At first, it seemed like your typical empowerment workshop, the kind where they promised to make you the best version of yourself. Little did anyone know, Rainier had some seriously twisted plans. Fast forward to 2017 and the cat's out of the bag. Nexium wasn't just about personal growth, it had a secret society within, and that's where things got shady. Imagine signing up for what you think is a sisterhood and ending up in a pyramid scheme slash sex cult. Rainier, or as his followers called him, Vanguard, because apparently regular titles weren't cool enough, was at the top. Below him were the so-called masters, who recruited more women into this secretive mess. And at the bottom were the fresh recruits, bluntly referred to as slaves. Now, this initiation process wasn't usual. Women had to hand over naked photos and compromising paraphernalia to their masters as some sort of blackmail insurance. And remember that ritual ceremony? Well, that turned into a full-blown branding ceremony. Instead of getting some excellent ink, they were undressed and the master burned a design featuring Renair's initials right above their pelvic area. In 2020, Rainier was in court facing many charges. More than a dozen women told the truth about the sexual and mental abuse they went through. It was found that the guy was guilty of sex trafficking, racketeering, and child abuse, with victims as young as 15 years old. The sentence was life in jail. His lawyers even had the nerve to say he wasn't sorry for anything. Two docu-series were made about this, The Vow on HBO Max, and seduced inside the Nexium cult on stars. They lay out all the crazy details so you can see the bad side of personal development gone entirely crazy. Number 4. The Manson Family Charles Manson turned cult leader into a job title. In 1967, he kicked off his twisted version of a reality show in San Fran, dragging his bizarre entourage to the City of Angels to become a rock star. Spoiler alert, he failed. Manson got fixated on a Beatles track, Helter Skelter. No, it's not a love ballad, more like the soundtrack for his delusional race war apocalypse. In 1969, he dispatched his disciples to a house in Benedict Canyon with a simple instruction, kill everyone. Among the unlucky people caught in the crossfire were actress Sharon Tate and hairstylist Jay Sebring. Next night's rinse and repeat, this time the LaBianca residence. Manson's murder spree had all the grace of a sledgehammer, leaving a bloody stain on the City of Angels. Some people say Manson wanted to kickstart his Helter Skelter chaos. Others argue he was peeved at a music producer who refused to cut him a record deal and thought the Tate house still belonged to the guy. And then there's the wild card, the copycat theory, suggesting the murders were a twisted attempt to free a Manson family friend from the clink. Regardless of the why, when those Manson murders hit the headline, it was like the final curtain call for the free love circus of the 1960s. The end of an era. Fast forward and the event has become a cultural goldmine. Books, movies, documentaries, you name it. Epics even made a series called Helter Skelter, an American myth. Oxygen got in on the action with Manson the women. Manson might be gone, but his despicable legacy is still hogging the spotlight. Number 3. The People's Temple Midway through the 20th century, the enigmatic Reverend Jim Jones set off on a tragic path, telling a story of abuse, apocalypse, and mass murder. The People's Temple of the Disciples of Christ was established by Jones in 1955, with its initial headquarters in Indianapolis. A flight to San Francisco followed as a result of his predictions, which were backed by claims of a nuclear assault vision. Political heavyweights, such as George Moscone, Harvey Milk, and Jerry Brown, were among Jones's backers when he was popularly known for his social activities. However, a dark truth emerged from beneath the surface. Jones, who struggled with substance misuse and engaged in horrific abuse, took advantage of his followers in ways that could not be imagined. Jones moved about a thousand devoted followers to Guyana and renamed it Jonestown, a utopia where media attention caused panic. Utopia was only a front for a horrific prison camp where followers suffered druggings, seclusions, 
and beatings. When Jones found out that some of his followers wanted to return to the US with Congressman Leo Ryan on November 18, 1978, things started getting out of hand. Jones had Ryan killed at his instruction. Then Jones called everyone to the pavilion and forced them to take a deadly mixture of grape flavor acid, cyanide, tranquilizers, and sedatives in an attempt at a mass suicide. Those who dared to resist were met with lethal injections or the danger of being shot. More than 900 people lost their lives in the Jonestown Massacre, which marks a dark period in US history. The ultimate catastrophe, physical torture, and twisted manipulation highlighted the pitfalls of charismatic leaders who used their followers' confidence for their own insane goals. Jones's fall into madness left a lasting mark on history. It was a warning about the terrible results of blindly following a leader. Number 2. Heaven's Gate Heaven's Gate is the most famous cult story in the weird history of cults. Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles play the main delusional members. Their cosmic link grew stronger in a mental hospital, where they became close because they both thought they were aliens wearing human bodies for safety. Working together under the fake names Bo and Peep, this dynamic pair set out to teach people on Earth about existence in space, which they called the next level. The hiring plan was to persuade members to cut ties with family give up their belongings and move to Colorado, so they could meet the so-called Kingdom of Heaven in space. As people lost faith, the once thriving cult began to fall apart, losing the very members that Applewhite and Nettles had worked so hard to get. The unfortunate death of Nettles from liver cancer in 1985 was a devastating blow. Applewhite, however, wasn't stopped by her death and changed Heaven's Gate by adding the idea that members could leave their bodies on Earth and rise to the next level, where they would get a brand new body. As time passed, the internet came along, and Applewhite used it to find new followers through the higher source website and media ads. His prediction was a cosmic sign for the big exit. It was time to eliminate those irritating containers, which means kill them, and go to the next level. On their website, there were even how-to videos on exiting their vehicles and accepting heaven. Heaven's Gate rented a house in Rancho Santa Fe as a grand finale. They were looking forward to the Hale-Bopp Comet as their way to graduate from the human evolutionary level. Applewhite and 38 committed followers planned a dark mass suicide for March 26, 1997. Buzzed haircuts, $5 bills, three quarters, black outfits with Nike decals, and patches that said Heaven's Gate Away team made up a strange picture of their sad plan to leave. The Heaven's Gate website is still a strange digital echo, a scary memory of how a cult went down a dangerous path into delusion that ended in death. Number 1. Synanon In 1958, Charles Diedrich established the groundwork for what would later become the infamous Synanon. Throughout its existence, Synanon went through three different stages. Starting as a drug rehabilitation program, it later transformed into a utopian society and eventually took on the appearance of a church. At the height of its popularity, Synanon received overwhelming support, drawing in many people who willingly paid to live in the compound. People from different professions generously contributed financially and through physical labor, accumulating assets worth an impressive $33 million. However, as Synanon grew, Charles Diedrich's desire for power increased. The community transformed, becoming a more rigid and harmful environment, departing from its previous approach of simple and creative rehabilitation methods. Diedrich's creation of a list of people he considered enemies took a dark turn when lawyer Paul Morantz, a vocal critic of Synanon, narrowly escaped a potentially deadly situation. A venomous rattlesnake was placed in his mailbox at Diedrich's request. In 1978, there was a significant turning point when law enforcement raided Synanon. Diedrich was caught in a drunken state at his Lake Havasu home. Afterward, he had to deal with the consequences of his actions. He was given a five-year supervised probation, a $5,000 fine, and was told to stop operating Synanon. In 1991, Synanon closed its doors for good, citing a mix of violence and tax fraud as the reasons behind its closure. The chapter of Charles Diedrich's life ended on February 28, 1997. The story of Synanon serves as a cautionary tale, highlighting the risks that can emerge when a worthy mission transforms into an oppressive regime. Not only this, there is a massive list of cults. Can you add one in the comment section? Check out the channel for more such interesting videos.